So we're here at the Arm Tech Con 2010. And uh, who are you? Uh, Bahadur Balban. Uh, so founder of B Labs. B Labs. Arm virtualization. So what do you mean by that? What do you do? Uh, we virtualize the operating system on, on the ARM uh, processors and um, run multiple versions of um, the same operating system or different operating systems combined. So right here you have a Panda board? Yep. Panda board, a keyboard, mouse and a screen. That's it. And so yes, where's your software? Uh, it's on the in the MMC cards, there is uh, there are two Android kernels plus the hypervisor image uh, built into a single ELF uh, image, which is uh, which loads the hypervisor and then two operating systems. Uh, so, at the base, what what is at the base of the whole system? Is it actually Android or uh, something else that actually launches in the beginning? Uh, it's the hypervisor itself. This uh, tiny layer of software, the bare metal hypervisor, uh, which, is, uh, which runs initially and then that brings up the operating systems. Is it uh, your hypervisor or is yeah, it open source yeah, one? It's, or? it's called Code Zero Embedded Hypervisor. That's what you do, your company? Yes, uh, we, we build the hypervisor and uh, promote the technology. Is it the best hypervisor in the market? or? Well, it's certainly the simplest and the leanest, and, um, but obviously for people to judge if it's the best or not. So let's see how, how, what it can do. So there's a Android. What, what can you do there in Android? Uh, we have a virtualized copy of Android uh, running on one of the cores. And uh, this is a second instance of Android running on the same device. So what did you do to switch from one to the other? Uh, so this this is the second set of applications. Uh, we click one button and like we have this icon here. Yeah. Uh, we used to switch into the second instance. That's it. So, you switched. Yeah. F yeah. It's fairly seamless switching between the two OSs and uh, separate applications. The primary application here is uh, to use two OSs. Uh, for two purposes, like personal Android OS and a business Android OS on your uh, mobile device, like a tablet or a mobile phone. So if you business Android needs to be totally secure and separate from your home use, that's what you would do? Uh, on your phone, if you, you can have your personal life, personal text messages, email, and your business life uh, all in one device. and. The, the better thing about bare metal virtualization is that you have full isolation between the two OSs compared to an application level uh, dividing solution. So it's 100% separate? Yes, it's, uh, even the OS kernels are running separately. Um, the, the OSs don't have any idea about each other. So, so businesses need this, they cannot do that? Uh, well, Consumers bring their devices to work, and that, that's where the problem starts from. Uh, consumers uh, bring their uh, personal life to work, and companies want to secure the business data on those phones and really separate the two computing um, from each other. And you can also run other OS, like Ubuntu? Uh, we can run the Linux-based operating systems like Chrome OS, uh, Linux, Ubuntu, uh, Do you have any running not just right Android. Now? Uh, I've got one more image here which has uh, Android plus Linux which yes. I, I can I need to boot it boot it though yeah. um, how long does it take to boot? It takes a few minutes a few minutes okay. yeah so there's booted up uh, can we check the Linux sure uh, we, we have the seconds so if I click on the icon here again now we switch into uh, Linux this is a completely isolated on its independent um, running on this independent um, Linux OS. We've got uh, the file system, um, the processes, completely separate system from the Android. So how does that com uh, compare to how TI was demonstrating dual OS? They were showing Ubuntu and Android yeah. or something like that. 
uh, they run a single Linux kernel to separate um, the two file systems, but it's the same OS running, so there's no um, there's no isolation between the, the systems. Uh, it's also a custom tailored solution because Linux is uh, built to have a single to have a single environment. Um, but here you you don't it's less intrusive on the OS because um, we take the guest OS and completely isolate it and only modify a few things in the, the kernel, the low level part of the system itself and that's all you need to do. So more maintainable and uh, better isolation. So they should use that, TI, when they demonstrate? Uh, possibly, they could, why not? They can I mean, call you and, and um, use, show that? Yes, uh, with the uh, it's readily running on the TI OMAP4, uh, one of the latest processors. So. How's the performance uh, difference when you virtualize and when you don't? Yeah, there is a bit of an overhead, um, but computations don't get affected uh, much, and about five to fifteen percent overhead on the system uh, runtime, uh, I, I would say. Uh, Where does the overhead go? Where does it need to go? Uh, there is switching that needs to be done um, from the hypervisor into uh, different processes, uh, interrupts. Uh, also, the hypervisor is really small, around 100 kilobytes, but it's taking up some space in the processor caches, so that's adding to the overhead. But it's fairly manageable, and um, I'll show a minor a demonstration of a 3D performance. Uh, and that would look the same on a native install of Android? Uh, you can't notice the difference, uh, or I mean, it's very mildly noticeable. I, I would say, if you put the native one, you would pr probably won't know that this is virtualization. So, how do how do you combine virtualization and uh, let's say emulation or remote desktops? Is it all the same category somehow? Uh, we don't be? we don't do emulation as such. Like if if this was done on an instruction emulation sense, then uh, there would be a lot more like. The, the way QMU does it, uh, there will be a lot more overhead because of the translation. There will be much more problems. But we only uh, the, the the guest OS uh, almost runs uh, natively because it's bare metal virtualization. It's uh, the overheads are um, focused on a, a minor part of the overall runtime, like the I said exceptions, uh, interrupts. So could you run uh, Windows Seven? Um, not today. We do uh, Linux-based operating systems like Android, Chrome OS, and uh, others. But uh, with the next generation of processors, uh, A15, there's going to be binary virtualization, and when when that's uh, there, we we will be able to run binary OSs as well. How many OS can you virtualize at the same time? Is only two? Or uh, can be 200, 200? Okay. We we did up to four guests, four Linux guests on a. Um, quad-core ARM um, system, uh, so probably that was the highest uh, ever done on an ARM uh, ARM system, uh, highest it? number of guests. Why is it the highest? Um, well, Each time you add an OS, it, adds, it, it takes resources, or what does um, it do? It's a mobile processor, so there's certainly a limit um, to how many guests would give you a uh, usable uh, performance. and. With with four guests, we, we had a fine um, operational system, but so any is it more than that. at the same time? What, what does it mean? You switch from one to the other, no? The other ones are not using any process resources, are they? Like uh, uh, the, the, right now, the Linux is off, no? Or, yes. Yeah. I mean, possibly could be done up to eight, maybe having two guests on uh, one core. Uh, we did that as well, but uh, you would run. Um, we put each guest on, on a core, and I mean, that was the, the demonstration. But theoretically, it might be possible. But why do you put them on one core only? Each of them. Why do they have to be on each of their own core? Um, you, can, you can do it differently, like place them on different cores, uh, pack them into a single core. You have all the flexibility on them because they are hypervisor threads. Uh, hypervisor takes control of all the cores and uh, the threads each run a different OS so it's it's configurable really. So do you have big customers with this solution yet? 
Um, there are some projects going on, um, prototypes. Uh, there's one wireless uh, vendor, chip vendor uh, doing work. Um, so is, do you think it's going to take off how soon, this solution? I think 2013, um, the, there is now active awareness on uh, from wireless OEMs on virtualization technology uh, recently, and uh, they're looking to build uh, solutions based on virtualization. How is virtualization of ARM better than x86? Uh, right now, it's um, it's it's emerging, right? Uh, the the processor didn't support it. We have it. Uh, we we are pushing it with uh, our technology, but uh, it's maturing next generation, A15 and other processors will have... Um, Natively support for the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, well, virtualization extensions uh, will be extensions. there. So it will be like the, in well, I'm saying will be, but the, the processors are already available. And um, it's going to be comparable with the Intel virtualization technology on mobile mobile processors. So you're going to be busy? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> right. Hopefully more busy.